My name is Robert Johnson, and together we're going to chit-chat about probably the most taboo subject of our generation, and that's human population. Now, some people call this the momentum of folly. And I'm going to play something for you. Can you hear that? Anyone know what that is? I'm not sure you got it, but that's the rate at which we are adding people to the planet. This breaks down to the little more than four births per second, minus the little less than two deaths, which nets us right around two and a third people each and every second. Now, to help you visualize this, you might imagine Burning Man, and add to that a sellout at the Super Bowl, and add to that the Azari Syrian refugee camp in Jordan. Together, these combine to add about a quarter million people, which our planet has to find the room and resources for each and every day. Expanding this concept, this is like adding a Los Angeles every 16 days, or a Germany and its 85 million inhabitants each and every year. If you're into big round numbers, this is like adding a full billion people, nearly in India or China, at a rate of about every 12, 13 years or so. Now, at this rate of growth, we will reach 9.4 billion by the year 2050. That's certain. After that, it becomes a little bit more fuzzy, but we're likely to uh, end out this century right around between 10 billion right there and 16 billion. So what's the big deal? Is this a problem, all these people? Well, yeah. In fact, it's arguably the biggest problem we've ever encountered. It's a problem because we're currently consuming the resources of about one and a half planet Earth. And adding to that, we're becoming more consumptive, not less so, as we grow. And so the question really becomes not how many people the Earth can hold, but rather how many it can sustain. And that number, hotly debated, is somewhere around 2 billion, all right? But we're currently over 7 billion. This is right about today's population. And we're still growing faster than ever. So what can we prognosticate from this road that lay ahead of us? Well, for one, we're on pace to lose about 30% of our farmlands by the end of this century. Similarly, only about 10% of forests will remain by 2030. And regarding the oceans, well, we better get develop a taste for jellyfish or those <laughs> big salmon. As our energy needs increase, we will obviously launch on an ever more desperate scramble for more and dirtier and riskier fossil fuels. And with our fossil fuel can, uh, consumption comes hand in hand, increase greenhouse gases. Now really the only problem with greenhouse gases, hey, they're natural, right? But they lead to ever accelerated warming. So we've come up one degree in this last 150 years, and we're likely to close out this century about six and a half to nine and a half degrees warmer than today. And kind of the only real problem with warming, kind of, I stress that, is that it leads to one thing, the complete thawing of the North Pole and a dramatic melting, if that'll happen by about 2040, by the way, and the dramatic melting of most of our land ice, you know, glaciers and whatnot, which will lead to the uh, rise in sea levels of uh, about six feet by the end of the century. Now this quadruple whammy of anthropogenic or human-caused uh, uh, changes is expected to bring about the extinction of some 40% of all current species of life on the planet. 40%. 
That's about 137 species of plants, animals, and insects a day. In fact, so dire is this prediction that it's been given the catchy title of the sixth mass extinction event. Unfortunately, this isn't science fiction. This is, she's hot though, but this isn't science fiction. Um, this will happen. And the hope is that because this is human made, there might be a chance if we can't stop it, at least we might be able to mitigate it some. And here's what we'd have to do to do that. We have to educate people about the impact and ramifications and mathematics of our population growth. We have to provide safe and affordable birth control worldwide. And we have to encourage people to limit their family size. And we've come a long ways. Today's birth rate is half what it was in 1950, but unfortunately there are three times as many of us having babies, which is why we're still growing faster than ever. So my point is this, you know, saving the whales, uh, preventing hunger, saving the children, saving the bees, elephants, all this are critically important causes, but each are ultimately futile unless united with a robust, vocal, out-of-the-closet campaign to bring our population back down to a sustainable level. Thank you.